was singing it with us. I, don't know, I, didn't, I didn't quite have the words, so it's one of those where you'd think. I've been down there practicing with Mom, though, so I'm like, Mom, just let me know if the Christmas carols drive you nuts. She's like, oh, no, I love the Christmas carols. I'm going to switch over right quick to my phone, so if you want to mute that, so we can stand up and sing a little bit. If you guys feel comfortable singing, you have your masks on, and you don't have to sing out too loud. This is my namaste, and this is a really fun one to start the season with. All right, let's get some energy going. You ready? All right, we've got to turn the track back up. Here we go. I like to do the Christmas shimmy. holiday season and for our opening prayer this morning we have our wonderful prayer chaplain trainer coordinator and officially licensed unity teacher she oh, doesn't all teach so let's give Peggy a blessing Ooh. Ooh. Uh -huh. should I turn this on Kevin? Is it on? Mm. turn it on there we go good morning good, good morning. morning everyone Blessings and namaste. Thank you so much, Jennifer. That was just got our blood going. We got out and danced. So this morning, in this early winter morning, this beautiful fall day, we have been so blessed. We've had a wonderful Thanksgiving week. So let's take a moment now to get quiet and go within. Take a moment to settle our attention on our heart space and our intention on Spirit Divine. Speaking now from that beautiful place of peace 
in the center. We realize our oneness, the one power, and the one presence. We feel that flow of love and light. And as the Daily Word said this week about peace, inner peace, it said that peace brings health, wholeness, prosperity, and loving relationships. That great peace that passes all understanding is available to us in each and every moment. It is a great blessing. For all those who may not be aware of the peaceful place, who may not feel that abundance, that warmth, that love, that light, and don't know to allow our natural health we raise up our energy, we raise up our vibrations, and we beam out to them in our homes, for all the ones we love, in our communities, and around the world. We beam loving light, healing energy, rest, peace, joy, and fun. We're blessed to be here. We see blessings on Unity Athens, Reverend Bronte, Jennifer as she plays and makes us joyful. And all the ones who are here and on live stream as our spirits are united. We are so blessed. Thank you, thank you, holy God. So be it and so it is, amen. Excuse me. Our daily word today will be read by a favorite unity person who's not here very often, but she's here today. <coughs> Let's hear it for BJ. BJ Steinhouse, and I have a tickle on my throat. Thank you. Woo! BJ Steinhouse is in the house. She's in the house. I didn't realize I'd affected you that way, Peggy. <laughs> no. She's all the clunk. I know. <laughs> Good morning. The daily words for today, November 28th, are hope and faith. Christ awareness is born in me. Hope is the window through which I glimpse the good that is yet to come in my life. Feelings of hopefulness kindle my zeal, imagination, love, and perhaps most important, my faith. As my hope matures into faith, I begin to realize that the good that I am hoping for is already mine. The journey to Christmas is our shared human story of realizing our indwelling Christ presence. This journey begins in hope and faith. As I start growing in spiritual awareness, I begin to feel hopeful. I learn that the Christ, the image and likeness of God, is my spiritual nature. My hope for the future becomes my faith in the present as I celebrate Christ awareness alive in me and expressing as me. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Thank you so much, B.J. Steinhouse. And with that, we light the Advent candle for today. <laughs> now
patches are coming out of the box. It's very interesting. It's probably a sign of something. <laughs> so as BJ read and has been mentioned, the first Sunday of Advent, often called hope. But in unity, we kind of move that into faith. And I also like to move it into knowingness. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we can hope for something. We can have faith that something's going to happen. But when we get to knowingness, that's that deep conviction, which was also in the Bible verse that BJ just read. It's that deep conviction that everything is truly, truly working out for us. And so perhaps if there's something you haven't been feeling real sure about this day or the days before, hold it in your heart. It's hope and faith and knowingness that this good is coming to you for sure. And we call that truth of that. And we say, Amen. And so it is. And we say good morning. Yay. Good morning. So Woo. wonderful to have folks here. And Jennifer and I were texting yesterday and it was like, oh, are you booked somewhere tomorrow, Jennifer? And she said, no. I said, well, you want to come on out? I'm like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so she quickly put some Christmas songs together. And um, did you write that song, Silver Bells? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> was that an Irving Berlin song or Mark Eklund? I can't remember. I have an Irving Berlin book at home. He wrote a lot of the good ones. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What about Sondheim if he had written some oh, God, Christmas songs in his beautiful life? Yeah. Beautiful life. So we do have some announcements today. Woo! Isn't that delightful? First thing being... Holiday shopping. As you shop, Amazon donates 0.5% of the price of eligible things, which it seems like everything I buy on Amazon is eligible. So you go to Amazon Smile, and you can pick your charity, and we are Unity Center for Spiritual Growth. That's our legal name on there. And you can just, it doesn't cost you anything. It's no deduction for or add-on to anything that you're buying. It just gives us that 0.5%. <coughs> I am absolutely delighted. We usually get like checks here and there from Amazon for about $30. Um, but this last month it was $60. Yeah. And five right. cents, I believe. So that was very cool. So consider doing that. I just bought some presents for the grandkiddos. And I was like, yeah, I gotta go to Amazon Smile first. And then you should smile while you're doing that. And that actually bumps up the energy of it, don't you think, Jennifer? <laughs> Always. We have a new class, the trip to Bethlehem, which was kind of arranged for a couple weeks ago. And we've had to um, reorganize the start date. So it's starting this Thursday. <clears throat> It'll be held in person here at Unity Athens from 1 o'clock to 2.30. Yay, in person. Anyone want to say that? Yay, in person. And it'll also be on Zoom on Thursday nights from 6 to 7.30. Now, you don't have to go to both, but if you can't make it to one of the Tuesday afternoon classes, you can do the class that night. It'll be not going to be identical, because nothing is identical when you're teaching and having um, contributions from everybody, but it'll be similar. This is a wonderful book, and it helps us understand metaphysical Bible interpretation, including the Christmas story. And a lot of what Charles Fillmore, he loved the Bible, and he looked at it from a truth perspective. So just sign up by um, letting me know. You can send an email, you can talk to me, and send me a text, however. Usually we have prayer and meditation the first Wednesday of every month here at Unity Athens at one o'clock until two and it's fine to come for a little while or for the whole thing. This month, I have a um, New Thought Clergy meeting in Atlanta on um, that first Wednesday, so it'll be held the second Wednesday of the month. What else? Oh, I'm sure there's something else just delightful to know here. Myrtle Fillmore, 
Unity's co-founder said this, heaven and earth listen and respond to the soul that is quickened into praise and thanksgiving. They like that word quickened, both her and Charles. Quickening, you call up the energy of things. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong. So how about another song that eh? help us be courageous and strong? And if you're here in person, feel free to sing along. If you'd like, you don't have to. In your mask, even at home if you want. I won't be blasting song at you saying I'm unmasked. Got that? Okay. All right, ladies. What should we have? Let's do, let's pick up our hymnals that are conveniently right beside our chairs. Okay, and turn to page 279. We'll do a traditional French carol, Angels We Have Held on High. Do you like to say it with a French accent? Angels We Have Held on High. <laughs> Two, seven, that, that sounded more German. Uh, 279. I'll give y'all just a few seconds. All right, if you're, and if you're at home, just uh, look up Angels We Have Heard on High. If you can do two computer screens at once. Yeah, or make up your own words. Okay, Kevin will need some volume. to our meditations, we always include two to three minutes of deep silence. Why? Because we feel that's the time we can feel that really deep connection to spirit. The time when it's just thought kind of pauses, thought goes to sleep, if you will, and we get into that gentle space, listening for guidance, perhaps, or comfort or a feeling of 
all its wellness. And sometimes we don't feel it in that quiet space. We feel it later on, maybe in the busyness of the day or night. And then all of a sudden, we hear very clearly the essence and the knowingness of God. I am as God created me. I am a light in this world. I am as God created me. Sing along if you like. I am, I am, I am. Can you sing that with me? I am as God created me. I am a light in this world. lighting a candle or turning off a light, getting comfortable maybe with our feet flat on the floor, feeling that energy of Mother Earth. Letting anything go that might be on our mind that is worrying or concerning or seems to be occupying all of our thoughts, just let it go. We have faith. We have faith that this life is a divine and beautiful journey. That even though things may come to us that seem troubling or at times we wish we could change the unfoldment of the days, we can know with faith behind everything there is an infinite infinite goodness and with everything there is joy there is peace there is love there's faith if we but look deeply and take these times to meditate to pray to be still feel that connectedness. So we focus on the breath, taking deep breaths, holding them just as long as we're comfortable and then letting go. Maybe with the ah, oh, or om, oh, or hum. And if thoughts come in, it's okay. We can release them. We bask in the stillness and the liquid liquidity love of God, of spirit. We feel that love wrapping around us now. And as we feel it and we behold it and hold it, we send it out to the dear ones on our minds and on our hearts. those we don't know in person, across the globe, perhaps on a whisper, spirit, send this love and light that is in me and projecting now out to someone who could use a little more light and love. And with the breath and on the breath and thinking of the breath, we begin to turn deeper within.
So connected to the divine I am, Jennifer sang about it. So connected to the light. And with the breath and on the breath, we turn deeper into the quiet into the stillness, into that beautiful peace and love that is always, always there for us. Breathing and relaxing into the quiet. We send out peace and love to our world. We send out comfort, healing vibes and energies. We see blessings on our country, our homelands, our ancestral lands. to the beloved Native Americans who walked this earth long before we came here and blessed it abundantly. And when we're ready, we can open our eyes with a breath and a bunch of breaths that's always good too <coughs> maybe stretch <sighs> so good to see people good to see Jennifer and Jennifer will be here next week yes Surprise! Yes. <laughs> we like you here. We like it when you're here. She'll also be giving a message and music on the 19th. This I'll be out in Albuquerque seeing my family. What is faith? We talked about it a little bit earlier. To me, it goes beyond hope. And it really blends with that knowingness we talked about. The knowingness that spirits with us, that this life, that we're spiritual beings having a spiritual experience. That what we are here is important. What we do here is important. Just our presence here is important. I'm sure none of us would do this, but if we spend our whole life in a small cave meditating, even that is energetically blessing the world. 
So all these other interactions we have, whether it's in the store or with our families or friends, many of us probably had um, giving thanks Thursday where we were with family and friends or even on Zoom or had some time with my grandkiddos on um, FaceTime. And it was just so delightful, just like I was right there with them, including toyless. <laughs> this is what I would like, Grandma. So faith is that. Faith is something we can carry with us in life, just as our other attributes of the Advent season, peace and love. Faith, faith, peace. Love. And then the last is joy, as it leads up to the holiday. And please pick up a free Advent booklet if you haven't received one of those already. There is a wonderful article in it, actually for the first Sunday in Advent, and it is written by... Teresa Burton. It is written by Reverend Teresa Burton, as Peggy said. She is the editor of The Daily Word. And she talks, first of all, that um, for many of us, last Christmas was very different, and some of us were extremely upset about that. We couldn't fly to see family. We couldn't be with our loved ones. We were maybe going through some appearance of illness ourselves or with family members. We may have been experiencing more grief than we have in years, just from the number of people that made their transition in the last 20 months. We felt shaken up, sort of. I know I did, and you know, and then I'd get hopeful, and then I'd feel more shaken up. So she explains that. Seeing each other on screens, which we all have certainly got used to, there's actually a thing called Zoom fatigue. She mentions that, she says, we accepted the changes and felt nostalgic for the visits of years past, hoping 2021 would bring a return to the traditions we treasured and the friends and family we missed. Do you remember this time last year? People were going like, yeah, cross out, 2020, 2021 is coming, things are gonna be better. And they were, but not maybe just quite the way we expected. She said, the hope that carried us through last Christmas may have been just a flicker in consciousness, a distant light on the horizon that this year would be better. But that hope inspired the faith. Hope inspires faith. That life is unfolding. Life is unfolding in an orderly way that peace, love, and joy are more enduring than loneliness, disappointment, and sadness could ever be. Faith helped us adapt to a time we never imagined having to live through. And I often think of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who you know, started their Unity teachings, their Unity School of Christianity, their publishing business in the late 1800s, and were very much alive through the pandemic of 1912. I don't see anything about it mentioned in their writings, though. It's easy, isn't it, she goes on, to keep faith in the goodness of God when life is giving us what we expect. Even when we get sidetracked or disappointed, it's possible to imagine coming out on the other side of a breakup, a job loss, or a minor illness or injury. But leaning into faith is especially necessary when tough times just keep getting tougher and the end isn't in sight. Now, she wrote this, I believe it was April this year, because that's about how long it takes for these um, articles that are written and turned in. So she didn't know how the end of the year might look. This Christmas may not constitute a full return to life as it was, but it will likely start to come close, and it has, has it not? We've grown strong in the time between then and now. The hope that kept us going this time last year is now faith. Feel that energetic switch from hope to faith. It's a complete knowing that the very nature of life, of God, is wholeness and goodness. 
and she concludes, this Christmas season comes bearing an unlikely but hard earned gift. The more hardships we have endured, the longer we waited, the more creatively we have coped, the more we grew in faith. So think about that. Your faith has been growing. Your knowingness, your confidence. This faith is really linked right there with confidence that all things are turning out all right. Hope was a good place to start, but it can only take us so far. We had to flex the spiritual muscle of faith to see ourselves and one another through. And now we're much closer to the smiles, hugs, and laughter we have longed for. Those are the fruits of faith. And she quotes 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Keep alert. 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 Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. So, how does that relate to us, and how can we work on our faith, grow our faith, exercise that faith muscle into knowingness. Couple ideas. Number one, perhaps remember a time your faith got you through something. Not an God that lives in the skies fixing things for you but how you got through something. How that thought of spirit or the one in your heart, that oneness got you through. What was the energy like? What was there for you? Who showed up in your life? What showed up in your life that got you through that? And when we mention this, it's not to sink into the despair or the depression that you may have climbed out of, or the grief or the unknowingness, or the feeling of being lost. But what got you through? And you may not have to find that at any point. Because sometimes when we get through things, we go like, whoa, <laughs> let me throw that over my shoulder and into the trash, because I don't want to go there anymore. But something got you through. Something got you through. Maybe make a little list. And then when we're feeling less than secure, doubtful, worried, pick out that little list and say, oh, that's right. This that one time when I was so ill and I got through that. This was the time I was so worried about the world falling apart or this or that, got through it. There was that time when I just felt alone. Maybe someone walked out of my life. Maybe something happened. I got through it. And when you list our strengths, that helps us remember how we choose to live from this point on. Another thing you can do is connect with the stories of others that have gone through challenging times. What about their stories? We talk about Bible metaphysical interpretation. What was it like for Mary or the cousin Elizabeth to be told they're pregnant? Kind of out of the blue, especially Elizabeth because she was past the very age of childbearing. What is it like if an angel shows up? You know, it's always like, oh, glorious angels, angels, look at them, you know, wow. But just about most of the Bible stories I've read, when an angel showed up, it was scary. <laughs> they talk about awe, it's kind of like awe, awe. So what is showing up in your life? But look at those stories and say, okay, look at these. Charles loved, Charles Fillmore loved to look at the Bible, the individual stories metaphysically, but the entire Bible also. This movement from not knowing God to Abraham, who had that often called the first connection, which is the basis also of the Jewish religion, which we celebrate, and Muslim. 
that first connection to spirit. It's like us when we get that first connection and then go through this whole cycle. So think about those stories. How in the world did Daniel get through that lion's death? Now, do we have to believe there were actual hungry lions in there that laid down and slept? Up to you. But do you have lions in your life that feel like they're coming at you sometimes? Or little microscopic things in the air, which I'm renaming all of them. That's for another time, I think. I'm not going to call it the Delta anymore. I'm going to call it the Dofus, Doofus. Um, let's disempower some of these things. So just think about that. Now, what are the lions that might be facing you that you can actually walk through and not be disturbed by? Third, to remember faith is remember when you supported someone else. You became the faith in their life. Maybe you sat with someone when they were crying. Maybe you were at the bedside of someone when they made their beautiful transition into pure positive energy. Maybe you told someone, suggested therapy, or listened on a deep level, or gave them a card telling them how wonderful you think they are, or prayed with them. Our prayer chaplains do a wonderful job of that. The prayers that they give you over the phone or here in person, just go up and say, hey, Peggy, could you pray with me a minute? And you can do that for others. I had a friend in ministerial school. She and her husband were going through it at the same time. And I was astounded by what they told us in one class, and I shouldn't have been. But they said, every time we get a little bit of discord in a conversation or around the table or walking through life, one of us will look at the other, and sometimes we say it and at the same time, let's have a prayer. And you feel how that drops into that centering space? And I think I probably gasped because <laughs> it's not a new idea, but to practice that with someone, and it doesn't have to be in a relationship basis. You might have someone, a prayer partner that you call and say, hey, you got a couple minutes? Can we just pray together? Just lift me up without having to explain all the stuff I'm going through. Just lift me up. So remember those things. If you would, remember time when faith got you through. Connect to the stories of others. And remember how you supported another. What's faith? It's knowing that the sun will appear tomorrow. I love that the new version of Annie is coming out in a couple days with a wonderful black Annie. Um, so know that the sun will appear tomorrow, even if it's behind clouds or in a long eclipse, that sun is still there. It's knowing, it's knowing. We can usually breathe without thinking. We don't have to tell our blood which way to go through our bodies. We don't have to tell ourselves if we're feeling okay, how to breathe. Sometimes we work on it, do we not? It's knowing that the universe is watching out for us, it's caring for us, that we can walk through life and be open to each and every experience that comes our way, each and every one. And sometimes we don't need to know the path. Sometimes we can do that, would you pray with me thing to spirit, however we see the divine, and say, would you give me the words to say right now? Would you help me calm down so I can connect at a better level with this person, or this situation, or this fear? Would you help me help someone else today, perhaps before you go out in the world and see anybody? Spirit, what is mine to do today? Spirit, infinite one, oneness with me, what would you have me do today? 
And then I think sometimes the faith part is if you get an answer, then it's like, okay, can we, can we get another answer, Spirit? <laughs> I'd like to do that next week. Um, what would you have me do today? But to listen to that, and it might not show up right away. All of a sudden, someone in your life may be face-to-face -face with you, whether it's Zoom or in person, and you realize that was the thing the Spirit wanted you to do today. And the words and the feelings and the love will come. There's a book called How Then Shall We Live? And that's, that's what this is all about. It's how then shall we live? Do I want to live in fear? No. Do I get afraid? Yes. Do I want to live in sadness or depression? No. Do I sometimes? Yes. But how would I feel the joy I feel if I didn't have some shadow time? No. You had shadow time in your life. Yeah. You had shadow time in your life. Yeah. Little Annie says the sun will come out tomorrow. But your bottom dollar. And I'm sure there's an explanation for that phrase. <laughs> That's your bottom dollar. The Corey. very last one at the yeah, bottom of your pocket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They got like a pile of little coins, you know, <laughs> maybe in your pocket or, or that dollar that you find in your purse or your clothing somewhere. Absolutely. Bet your bottom dollar tomorrow there will be sun. So, as our author said, urban trees. Yeah, there may be things on the news that make us scared again, or worried, or doubtful, or maybe life throws us this curveball out of nowhere, or maybe there's some sadness about something. But sit with your faith. Sit with the knowingness that all is well, because it is. And in this Christmas season, this Advent time, this Hanukkah time, and many, many other spiritual and religiously based festivals and holidays in this time of year, the dawning of the light, may you find time to feel that faith, to feel that knowingness, feel that love, to practice joy, and look for it. Perhaps, like I do, say to the universe every day, would you just surprise and delight me today? Jennifer, would you surprise and delight us with some more music, please? Sure. Okay. Why not? Let's give her a big round of applause for coming all the way from Kennesaw, Georgia, just a long way away, and being here with us this morning. Yeah. 
Today, Jennifer offered to stay on a while and help get the tree up. If you'd like to help with that, that'd be more, you're more than welcome. And it's a nice time to communicate and get to know each other better, too. Yeah. And it's fun. You know, we can put it up here. It'll, and, get, us, it'll yeah. get us inspired to go home and get our own decorations up. That's right. <laughs> I did trim my bushes so I could put the lights on, but the lights aren't on them yet. But the bushes are trimmed. <laughs> We always like to celebrate prosperity here at Unity Athens. And Kevin's gonna put some things up on the screen for if you're watching from home, ways you can support Unity Athens. We mentioned the Amazon Smile earlier, which is so, the only thing about it that's tricky is remembering to do it. <laughs> you know, I get to, I'm on Amazon, and it's like, oh, I need to go over to Smile. And then they actually remind me sometimes. But also, we're very, very grateful for those that support Unity Athens financially and with your prayers and your support and your energy. And that helps us to thrive and continue to do well in the future. You know, just, we had some plumbing problems we've been mentioning over the past month and that got resolved this week. Uh, I've never been so grateful to a group of plumbers and they're wonderful and they're funny and they were just delightful to have here they found the issue so that's one thing but we do have other needs that need to be met and we appreciate the income that comes in from you especially during this time when we can't rent the rooms as much as we used to we have a sacred exchange basket up here and some other baskets around the room and a change jar in case your pockets or your purse or your bag is getting heavy and We'd like to bless our offerings and our abundance because we know as we give, we receive. There's a story when um, Charles Fillmore and Merle were sitting around the table thinking of actually getting a building together to buy some first land. And this was 1800, late 1800s. And he said, well, okay, where's the money gonna come from? And one of the gentlemen probably on the board reached into his pocket, talk about the bottom dollar, pulled out a penny and put it on the table. And I think maybe only one person might have laughed. Nobody laughed because they realized that is abundance, it's giving. It is moving things forward. So if you'd like to bless your offering, your exchange, or the idea of your prosperity in the days and weeks and years ahead, I'd like to hold mine over my heart and say this sacred exchange. We know that as we give, we receive, but we don't give to receive. We receive because we give. And as the mother, father, God, you can use your own name for God in that spot. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed. Thank you, infinite spirit. Amen, and so it is. Namaste, that's our basket over there. We like to send prayers out across the globe, and Jennifer is gonna give us a peppy song to end with in just a moment. Um, just just bless our, our world, our, all the countries, our planet, send some blessings out. If there's someone anywhere that's struggling, we send light and love and joy, and we just allow that to flow from us to them. Okay, now if you have car keys with you and you want to dig them out, because this is kind of a noise-making song. <laughs> Where did I put my noise maker? Oh, here it is. And we can just send this kind of jingly energy 
Well, these are not my car keys. <laughs> Want to make it clear, I realize they're not your car keys. Oh, well, I'm thinking, you know, that would be really pretty hanging from my ignition. I, I, I kind of dig it. And if you're at home, just know you're not alone. You're not alone. Your life is worthwhile. We say that here, too. Your life has meaning. Know that. You're not alone. You feel that energy in your heart as we end with a... Is this, did you write this song, Jen? I wish if I had written this song, I would have a quadrillion dollars. <laughs> My grandkiddos love it. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh.